Okay, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Hugh O'Keefe, and I'm from Ashling Microsystems. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about heterogeneous uh, debug on uh, multi-core SOCs. And uh, when I mention debug, I'm, I'm, I'm really talking about software debug. So this is when you have your SOC designed, whether it's an actual physical piece of silicon or something running in an FPGA design, and uh, you need to debug the software. First of all, just a little bit of background on, on system on chip, on, particularly on system on chip design, design trends. Obviously, we're all aware of this. Um, SOCs are becoming more and more complex. Um, it's driven by a number of factors, but primarily the market and, and the need for more and more functionality on an SOC. And an SOC designer has to weigh up many things, um, the features that are going to be available, the power consumption, and um, things like the, the performance uh, requirements as well, how long the battery lasts and, and, and so on. And, and what is happening, and I suppose it has been happening for a number of years, is that multi-core socks are, are heterogeneous. In other words, they use, um, they use cores from, from different vendors. Um, the 800 pound gorilla in the market is of course the, 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 the ARM family, but um, it's quite common now in most SOCs that run in mobile phones, um, more embedded type applications like SSD drives, they will have, um, they will have cores from, from, from different vendors. Um, I've listed some of them there, ARM obviously, uh, Synopsys Arc is, 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 is quite popular, uh, MIPS is quite popular, and more recently, obviously with the, with the um, emergence of RISC-V in the market, um, we see RISC-V also starting to have a, a foothold in SOC design. RISC V in particular is, um, I guess, it's coming in at the low end. It's 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 kind of replacing microcontrollers in 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 SOCs as opposed to at the at the high end. This slide gives you an overview of of, I guess, um, a, a reasonably typical SOC. Um, so you have um, you have a number of ARM cores here, and over here on the the right you have uh, a couple of RISC. Uh, RISC five cores. So in this example, the ARM cores would be used to do the, um, I suppose the the heavy lifting, the the application, the video, the machine learning, the the AI, whatever. Whereas the RISC five cores would be sort of like microcontrollers. So they would be doing things like um, sensor management, uh, battery management, uh, I/O control, bat battery control, that that kind of thing. In this example, the cores are are, um, are all connected. Um, they're all connected via via a DAP interface, which comes to the outside world via uh, an SWD interface. But again, this um, this depends on the the SOC. Um, some SOCs may use JTAG to to connect the cores internally, um, compact JTAG, which is a two wire version. Or in the case if 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 the vendor is using the ARM uh, core side technology, then they'll be using uh, using SWD. So the SOC we're looking at here has ARM cores and RISC V cores. Um, obviously, if you buy a, a tool chain from ARM, then you're not going to have RISC V support. So what tends to happen with these um, het heterogeneous cores? is that there are multiple tool chains needed for each particular core. And um, so in effect, the, the tool chains are almost sandboxed from, from each other. And um, obviously this is, this, this is problematic because it means the engineers need to use multiple tool chains. You can't work and develop within a, 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 a single environment. Um, that's at the, at, the, at the code development stage, but when you come to debugging, Again, this is problematic because um, in an SOC, you want to be able to debug the interaction between cores and CPUs and seeing data transferring between CPUs and, and, and exactly what it's doing. So that's the, 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 the problem statement. Um, the company I work for, Ashley, we, we, we've addressed that in, what we, in our risk-free product. Um, it's an Eclipse-based uh, development environment. It supports uh, development from, for, for heterogeneous cores. So whether you're using ARM, whether you're using RISC-V or Synopsys Arc, you can use this environment to, to develop your code, uh, build your code, and debug your code. And um, in particular, 
the, the debugging is, is, I guess, the, the really challenging part and getting that to work in a heterogeneous environment. So this slide here is a, an example of um, a heterogeneous uh, target system. It's a Xilinx FPGA board. Um, the, the actual FPGA is here, obviously. That contains a, a multi-core heterogeneous design. In this case, um, using the, the Western Digital Swerve core, plus some uh, Synopsys R cores as well. Um, so you can see in this design that we have a, a JTAG connection here. Uh, down here we have an Ashling Opella XD connection, and this then is um, running off to the, to the host PC. So the, with this setup, with a single debug probe, it's possible to debug multiple cores in the, in the FPGA. How those cores are connected within the FPGA, you know, th that's going to vary between, between designs. Our, our, our tools support JTAG, CJTAG, and CoreSight, or, or, or SWD. So that's how it looks from a hardware point of view. That's how everything connects up. If you look at the software then, um, again, there are multiple ways this can be done. And, and you know, our tool is fairly flexible in that it can be configured via XML depending on how the, the cores are connected within your target. But um, this is a very simple example. We, 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 we really have, um, we have two launches here. Um, so we have a, a launch for the ARC, for the ARC core. And down here, we have a launch for the RISC core. And um, as I said earlier on, even though you're developing, you're, you're debugging multiple cores, um, they, can, they can all share the same um, JTAG probe. So we, we're, we're using the, the same JTAG probe in both cases. So this is called a launch, or a launch configuration. So it's a way of setting up the debugger and telling the debugger, I'm interested in debugging this specific core and what type of, of, of core that is. So when you've run, when you've launched and uh, the probe is connected to your, to your SOC and you're connected to your cores, well, within the debug environment, you'll see, um, you'll see a launch for each particular core in your SOC. So in this, in, in this graphic here, I've, I've highlighted the, the RISC-V launch in green and um, the ARC launch is in blue. So that means really within the, within the debugger, you, you can see both of the CPUs and you can control both of those CPUs. You can control, the, control them uh, individually or in sort of a lockstep mode. So when you do one thing in the CPU, it's automatically done in, in the other CPU. Uh, another feature we've added is what we call uh, system-wide or SOC-wide SOC uh, breakpoint support. So if you set a breakpoint in one core and um, you want to halt all cores when that breakpoint is taken, that's, that's, that's possible from, from within the environment. Running out of time slightly. Um, this is a more general view. It shows you the, the sort of full view you get within the debugger. Again, I've used some color coding here. So, so the green, um, you, know, you, you, you have a dedicated window down here showing you the arc registers. Uh, down here, the red, uh, you have a dedicated window showing you the, the, the RISC V registers. So within the debugger, you can have multiple views for, for each CPU that is connected. And they're color coded so that you can very quickly visually visualize um, what, what CPU you're looking at. Um, you can pen these views as well. So that means that when you, when you open it, when you open a window, you can keep it open so that it's, 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 it's open regardless of which CPU is active. So in this case, I have a, I have a, I have a window pinned for the ARC registers and I have a window pinned for the, the RISC-V registers. Over here on the left um, in, the, in the debug view, as you select a core, then all of the windows will, will update to, to reflect that core. So for example, in here in the source window, you would see the actual source code associated with, with, with the core you have selected. So that's, that's a, really a very, very quick introduction to a, a heterogeneous um, SOC debug. Um, the challenges associated with it, the, 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 the fact that um, if, you, if you're buying your tools from a, a, a core vendor, then in general, the core vendor is only going to support their core in their debug tools. So the need for independent tool vendors who can, who can address this and provide tools that support all cores. Um, 
we, we have a booth up in the exhibit hall, uh, 216, so if you'd like to come by and see this working, we have a, we have a system set up that we can, we can actually demo there too today. So thanks for your time, and I um, hope you enjoyed that, and it was informative. Please uh, feel free to contact me, or if you go on our website, there's, there's some more information on, on, on our multi-core debug tools as well. Thank you.